Hello and welcome back to Bay College's video lectures. We're still talking about section 1.13, Introduction to Like Terms and Polynomials. We're going to look at some example problems and some of the tools that we can use uh, that we've already learned. Let's say we have this example here. I have 8y plus z plus y minus 4y. And what I want to do is combine like terms. But if we look at this, we see it's not in any particular order. Our variables are kind of jumbled around. Well, if we recall the commutative or associative properties of addition or subtraction, we can rearrange this in any order we want. But we keep in mind, we're dealing with integers. So we have to realize that all the signs that are in front belong to that term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the associative property and just rearrange it. I have eight y's, and I have the like term of a positive y and the like term of a negative 4y. So I rearranged it so that they were all together. And then I have this unlike term of a z. So now I can combine the like terms because I used that associative property. 8y's plus one more y would be 9y's. 9y's minus 4y's would be 5y's. So I have a total of 5y's being added to a z. 5y plus z, because these are not like terms, I can't go any further. So that's where we stop. We've simplified this as far as we go. And because we call it simplifying, we can see that four terms and two terms, I'd rather have a binomial than a polynomial more than three terms. What about this? Another property we learned was the commutative or associative properties of multiplication. Here I have multiplication. I have a 4 times the quantity of 5 times a. So there's all multiplication in here. So I could rearrange this as saying 4 times a times 5, or I could say 5 times 4 times a. And one of those is going to simplify this to less numbers or variables or whatever. So we use those tools, and I say, well, 4 times 5, I could do that math. Because I don't know what a is, there's not much I can do with it. So 4 times 5 is 20 times a. So I was able to use the associative property to simplify this down to one integer and one variable instead of two integers multiplied. If we th use this concept here and then this concept of combining like terms, we can simplify this as well. Negative 3 times 5x, well, I can do that negative 3 times 5. But I remember that this is an integer. This negative belongs to that number. Negative 3 times 5, 1 of the negative gives us a negative value. 3 times 5 is 15. Negative 15x plus 4 plus x. Now I can rearrange this because of that associative property. I can add an x and then add the 4, change their order. So I have negative 15x's plus an x. These are like terms because they both have an x to the same power. Negative 15 plus 1, well, they have different signs. The difference of 15 and 1 is 14. The larger value is negative. So I'm going to write it over here. Negative 14 of these x's, when I combine these two terms, I get that negative 14x plus 4, which is not a like term. So that's as far as I can go. So <clears throat> you can pause the video at this time and attempt this one using the associative properties. All right, let's move on. Sometimes we'll have parentheses where we have operations within those parentheses. If we recall using the distributive property, well, we can eliminate these using the distributive property. We see this negative 1. Now, or this negative, but I think of it as a negative 1 because I have a 1 out front here. It's like being the coefficient of what's in those parentheses. So I can use the distributive property, distribute a negative to each of those terms. Well, distributing a negative is multiplying by negative 1. Or we could also use the concept of the opposite. Well, what's the opposite of 2x? Negative 2x. So I distributed that negative to the 2x. What's the opposite of negative 3? Well, the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Or I can think of it as a negative times a negative. Distributive property is multiplication. I'm multiplying two negatives, which gives me a positive. Either way I think about it, I'm going to come to the right term if I use it properly. Let's look at this example here. <clears throat> we have parentheses. An order of operations says deal with those parentheses before doing any other operation. 
So I'm going to distribute this value through these parentheses, that distributive property. But I have to be very careful of this sign. This sign belongs to that number 2. It is an integer of negative 2. So I'm going to distribute a negative 2 to the x. Well, negative 2 times x. I'm not doing anything with these values because they're outside the parentheses. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative y, a negative times a negative is a positive 2 times y. And now I could rearrange it. I could rewrite it using the associative property. I have like terms. I have minus 2x's and plus 1x. They both have x to the same power, which is 1. So negative 2 and 1. Well, different signs. I find the difference. The difference of 2 and 1 is 1. But the larger value is negative. So I get negative 1x. So I combine these terms. And sometimes when I'm working with lots of terms, like in this case, it's a four-term polynomial, I like to underline my like terms or circle them if, they're, if I have more than one set of like terms. And I can say, OK, now I combine those. Now I can just rewrite the rest. I have a positive 2y and a positive 4. And I wrote this in a somewhat of a descending order. These have the same degree. And we recall degree, hopefully. So why don't you take the time to pause the video and attempt this one. Use that distributive property and then combine like terms. Be very careful with those signs. All right, we're going to move over here. And we're going to see one last example where sometimes we have more than one set of parentheses. Well, maybe we have to use the distributive property more than once. So I have 5 times this quantity. So I'm going to distribute 5 times a is 5a. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20 times b. 5 times negative 4b. We have a positive times a negative, only one negative there. So I know it's negative. 5 times 4 is 20 times that b using that uh, associative property of multiplication. Here, have got to be careful. That negative belongs to that 2. So to get rid of these parentheses, I'm going to distribute a negative 2. Negative times a positive is negative. So negative 2 times positive a is negative 2a. Negative 2 times negative b, a negative times a negative is a positive, the opposite of a negative. And now we can do a little bit of assessing. I can say, hey, here and here, they both have a to the first power. And here and here, they have b to the first power. So notice what I did as a, an accounting method is I underlined my like terms, and I circled my other like terms. So now I know how to group them. 5a and negative 2a, well, 5a's minus 2a's. If I have five apples and I take away two apples, I will be left with three apples. Maybe that a stands for apples. Here, I owe someone 20 bananas, and I'm going to get two bananas. So I'm going to owe 18 bananas. So maybe if that helps you, assign the variable a name. So it kind of helps you quantify what you're working with. And we saw negative 20 and positive 2, different signs. We found the difference. The difference of 20 and 2 is 18. The larger value was negative. That's how we got that. And we notice these are not like terms. It's as far as we can go. So use these tools. Whatever combination helps you get to where you need to go. All right, <clears throat> we're going to look at an application. Here we have a shape, a rectangle. And we're told that one side is 3 feet. And the other side, uh oh it contains a variable, x plus 1 feet. So whatever x is, this is one more foot than x. So we're asked to find the perimeter. Well, this is where we need to have the tools of what is perimeter. Well, if we recall our formula, perimeter is 2 lengths plus 2 widths. Well, let's just assign these. I'm going to say, well, this is my length, because I always like to call the longer side my length. And this is my width. So I'm just going to plug it into my formula. The perimeter is 2 of my lengths. I use parentheses, plus 2 of my width, which is x plus 1. And now you can see, look what I have to do here. I have to use that distributive property. So if I do that, 2x and 2, 2 times x, 2 times a positive 1. This is positive, so I don't have to worry about signs. And 2 times 3. Now I can do this multiplication before addition or subtraction. I get 6 
plus 2x plus 2. And then I notice that's just a number. That's just a number. Those are like terms. So I have 2x plus 6 plus 2 is 8. This is the perimeter of my rectangle. What if I'm asked to find area? Again, I have to remember a formula. Area of any rectangle is length times width. Well, this area is actually easier to find than that perimeter. If our area is the length, which we assign 3 feet to, times x plus 1 feet, we can just use the distributive property. And we're where we need to be, 3x plus 3. We distribute that, 3x. We distribute it there. To 3. Now, because this is an application problem, we have to remember we're dealing with units of feet. So our perimeter is units of feet. But area, we multiplied our feet together. Area is always a squared unit. So we have feet squared. And I'm going to put parentheses around that because those feet squared apply to both of those terms. All right, we're going to do one last example. What if we're asked to evaluate a polynomial? And we can see, ooh, this thing can be very intimidating. We see so many different terms. When we say polynomial, that's a lot of polynomials, right? We're asked to simplify and then evaluate. Well, simplifying can make this less daunting as it may seem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify my like terms. I look at the variable. I say this is x cubed. And I look and see no other x cubed. So this term stays all by itself. It doesn't have any like terms to combine it with. If I look at negative 3x squared and positive 5x squared, they both have x's and they're both to the same power. These are like terms. So I identify them with my rectangle here. 5 minus 3, or I can say different signs, find their difference. The difference of 5 and 3 is 2. And the larger net value is positive. So I have positive 2 of these x's being squared. And if I look at this, I have negative 4x and negative 2x. Well, these both are like terms. They have the same sign. So I can simply combine them. They're both negative. Negative 4 and negative 6, or excuse me, negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 6 of these x's. And then we look here, and I'm going to use a circle because Circles are different than rectangles, are different than lines. So I've identified these terms in a different way. Negative 7 plus 5, well, they have different signs. Their difference is 2, but the larger value is negative, negative 2. And we can see <coughs> this six-term polynomial simplified down to four terms. Well, that's a, still a little daunting, but it isn't too bad. But we have to remember, we simplified it. Now we have to evaluate it. So to evaluate something. I'm going to replace all my x's with parentheses. And then I'm going to plug and chug for that value. If x is negative 2, I'm going to put a negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Everywhere I had an x, 1, 2, and 3 x's, 1, 2, and 3 of those negative 2's. Now we are going to use order of operations, work within parentheses. Negative 2 cubed. Everything in these parentheses is being raised to the third power. So I have three of these multiplied together. Well, that's going to give me a negative 8. So I worked within those parentheses by dealing with this exponent. Deal with this exponent. Negative 2 squared, well, a negative 2 times a negative 2, those are two negatives. When I multiply an even number of negatives, I get a positive, And 2 times 2 is 4. Here I just have negative 6 and negative 2, no exponent. Uh, so before I do that step, I'm going to rewrite the rest. So now I'm ready to say, OK, what operations are left? I have multiplication, and I have addition and subtraction. I do the multiplication first. So I'm going to do this term. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative 6 times negative 2, remember, these signs belong to the numbers that they precede is going to give me a positive 12 and then minus 2. And now we can see, well, we can just add from left to right, because that's what order of operations tells us to do. And uh, I'm just going to go left, right, negative 40 and 8. Says, OK, different signs, find their difference. Their difference is 32, but the larger value is negative. And then I can add 
12 and subtract 2, well, negative 32 and 12, again, they have different signs. So I can find the difference. The difference of 30, negative, or 32 and 12 is 20. But again, the larger value is still negative. And then when I go to the next term, they're both negative, same sign combined, negative 22. So this is my simplification. There's another way we could have done it. We could have used that associative property and said, well, let's combine our negatives and then combine our positives and then find their difference. So whatever way you approach it, be consistent and keep practicing. This has been 1.13 for Math 085. Thank you for watching.